can clarify that for the uh, audience too. It seems to be so close for people that are out there. They're saying, hey, what you guys, why are you, all you people debating this issue, okay? Because it seems like you agree on so many things, which is true. And yet, what you're saying is that at the moment of baptism, that salvation is applied. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. And what they are saying is that it's applied at another moment. That's right. Without baptism. That's right. Yeah, now, they, that. at that point, if I'm correct, uh, say so, James and David, would be that, in essence, I think that you would consider these fellows to be Christians in the full sense of the word, even though you would disagree on their theology. Is that a fair statement? That would be a true statement of uh, my position, despite what I would call the extra parts of theology that they have added, because they truly believe in Christ. From my perspective, they are my brothers in Christ. I do not deny that. Okay, and, and I'm not trying to divide mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. our, our fellowship, but without fudging on your methodology, which I love, which is namely, if the scripture says it, we're stuck with what the boss says, with what the Lord says, and you would have to say, in looking at them, they can have true faith and true repentance, and yet, and they can even have baptism, but if they did not consider baptism as you are saying, namely that it's that at that moment when Christ applies salvation, if they do not view it that way, would you say that they're Christians? You want me to respond? Yes. My response, first of all, John, and I will respond. You may think this is hedging at first, but I believe that that's a prejudicial question. I believe that, in other words, regardless of how I answer, I'm going to be in hot water. If I say no, that I don't believe these men are brethren, then immediately I've turned you off and I've turned everyone else off. If I say yes, I believe these men are brethren, then the question is put to me is, why argue about baptism? Why even argue it? So either way I answer, I'm going to be in hot water. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to answer. But, but, but that's because of your theology, brother. Hey, well, well, that's fine. That's but, fine. That's why you're in I, hot water, hey, baptismal I, water. I'm willing to take it. Hey. <laughs> Hey, let me say this. It's still a prejudicial question because you've got a fellow about five seconds before he repents and believes, and he doesn't do it. And then what's your response? You say, well, what, whatever the Bible teaches, that's important regardless. And whatever the Bible teaches on this question is important right. regardless. Could, let, let, could, could, could I just ask a question? I think All this right. is very important. Uh, I think it was Jerry in the previous week's program used the term process in relation to salvation. Am I correct in saying that? I don't exactly remember the context of the statement, David. You'd have to... Well, we were talking about uh, 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 righteousness and the imputation of righteousness, and I picked you up as saying, using the word process. Now, I may have picked you up wrongly. I'd just like... Okay, I, I don't remember the context of the statement. It's my problem. Uh, you let me deal with Galatians 3. No, well, well, no, I think this is... No, no. <laughs> this is very important. All right. No, let's Again. keep... Uh, if, if you would, even though it's a... The reason I bring it up is to say to people out there that that is an important question. Yeah, it's important. And uh, one pastor was talking with me, and he was saying to me, he's saying, John, we have such great fellowship. And he says, uh, and he says in fact, I wouldn't even say that in terms of uh, where you're coming from that I'll make a final declaration about you. And I'm saying, wait a minute. If the scriptures are exactly what you're saying, then I agree with you. That's what the boss says. The only thing that we're talking about is, is that what scriptures actually say. But, I mean, does that seem to be the difference? So people that are tuning in are wondering, uh, what in the world is the story here? We believe that one must be immersed in water as an expression of faith and repentance in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. And we also have to say that you're we not saying that. that that's baptismal regeneration. No, sir. No, Would you define baptismal, baptismal, baptismal regeneration for people that think that because you don't want to be caught with that We do not either. believe. Baptismal regeneration implies there's power in water. There is no power in faith. There's like no the car wash, you repentance. put the person through, whether they have faith or anything else, you there put them through no, and the water does something to them. There's no, no water doesn't do anything to them. That's what you're, I'm saying, baptismal regeneration for folks that believe that, they're simply saying... There's power in water for baptismal regenerations. We do not believe there is power in faith to forgive. We do not believe there's power in repentance to forgive. We do not believe there's power in water to forgive. We believe the powers in the Lord Jesus when a man obeys the commands to repent and be baptized. Okay, we're going to go on with that as we come right back. Gentlemen, I'd like to have kind of a, a wrap-up statement on Galatians 3, and then let's move on to another verse, okay? From both sides, please. Jimmy, you want to start us on Galatians yes, 3? Yes, uh, if I may, please. In uh, Galatians chapter 3, 
beginning at verse 6, it talks about Abraham believed in God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. At verse 8, God would justify the heathen through faith. In verse 11, but no man is justified by the law on the side of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Verse 21 mentions that righteousness could not come by the law. In verse 24, we read again of being justified by faith. In verse 26, you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It is my view that sonship and righteousness in, in Galatians chapter 3 are the same thing. They're used interchangeably. Those who are sons of God have been made righteous by Christ. Those who have been made righteous by Christ are sons of God. Galatians 3, 26, you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now, what kind of faith? That's what the argument is. What kind of faith? And it is the kind of faith that includes baptism. For, why are you sons of God by faith? 3 and 26. For, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Job said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. We put on Christ and in the light of the, the context of Galatians 3, that's when we put on his righteousness. It clothes us. We become his sons. Sons by faith, which includes baptism, and it is not a work of merit. It is not a work of man's righteousness. It is nothing that we do to earn salvation. It is a part of our faith response to the grace of God. And James, James now, final, does baptism okay. then make us righteous? Just pardon me. Does, you want me, is, may I answer? Certainly. Yes. Does baptism make us righteous? Yeah. Christ makes us righteous. Faith does not make us righteous. Repentance does not make us righteous. Confession does not make us righteous. Baptism does not make us righteous. And yet faith, repentance, confession, and baptism are conditions we meet in order that Christ might make us righteous. No. David? You, are you are confusing two things. You are confusing imputed righteousness, which is reckoned to us by faith, with imparted righteousness. Now, justification is God declaring the guilty sinner who believes to be acquitted in his sight. Sanctification is the process of making that justified sinner more like his son, Jesus Christ. Now, if you look at Romans 8, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, uh, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Now, justified and condemned are set against each other. Now I am not made justified, I am declared justified. Just as I am declared condemned if I will not believe in Christ. But the argument is in verse 34, we don't look to our baptism as the occasion of the impartation of God's righteousness. We look to the Christ who has died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. All right, let me, let me stop in here. I think you agreed with everything that Jimmy said in terms of it was Christ that does it. I don't think anybody up there is saying that any other way is happening except it's how at what moment does Christ do it mm, exactly. is the